Welcome to West Country Wanderings and welcome to another Cotswold Walk. Cotswold Walk number five. Today I start my journey here in Worcestershire. I'm actually just outside the town of Pershall. These are Pershall bridges. This is an ancient medieval bridge. I'll drop in the date of that. There's a newer road bridge just runs parallel and this of course is the River Avon. We're in the Vale of Evesham and we're going to make our way to the village of Great Combaton for a walk up the Cotswold Escarpment along the top of Breeden Hill. So why not join me for another Cotswold walk here on West Country Wanderings. Now though Pershall doesn't lie in the Cotswold area, the village of Great Combaton, which lies just two miles to the south of it, does because it comes under the what's known as the Cotswold AOMB, Area of Outstanding Natural Beauty. But Pershall, of course, is a town well worth exploring with its fabulous Georgian architecture. In fact, I made a video here just before Christmas looking at the Christmas lights and I did a little tour inside the wonderful Pershall Abbey. But there has been a bridge here since Saxon times. This one has been here for around the early part of the 17th century. In fact, some of the stones that were used around this area also came from the former Elmley Castle, which is close to where we're walking today as well. I'm currently sat in Great Combaton's fantastic and quiet, peaceful churchyard. What I'll do is I'll do a tour of this village towards the end of the video. I'll insert some video footage with some photographs of the village, with some music. Before we do that, we have a walk ahead of us. Currently, looking at the OS map, I'm 32 metres above sea level. And we're going to make our way up to a fort and what's called Banbury Tower. I've never been up there before, that part of Breeden. Takes us up to 293 metres. So I'll, though our walk today is quite short, it's only just over six and a half kilometres. There is a, a bit of climbing to do, particularly during the first section. So obviously you need to put the work in to get the views at the top. So hopefully it's a fairly clear day today. So hopefully we should get some views across both the River Avon and the River Severn, maybe across to well, certainly across to Pershaw and across to the Mulvans and city of Worcester, perhaps back the other way as well, and maybe even a bit further into the, uh, the Brecon Beacons over in Wells. Well, who knows? Well, we'll have a look. Anyway, hope you enjoy the walk. Let's get on with it. So, yeah, that's where we're headed today, up to Banbury Tower. So there should be a fort up there. And also we pass a place called Woolus Hall. I'm not sure if that's a ruin or if it's an existing hall, but it's on the uh, side of Breeden Hill. So we'll have a look at that on our journey. Now today isn't, I haven't taken this walk today from a book. It's one I've made up myself just by local knowledge and looking at OS maps, of course. But part of the route today does form part of the White Chaven Way, which links the village of Broadway in the Cotswolds to Droitwich Spa, about seven miles to the north of the city of Worcester. Although in a straight line that's probably only 20-25 miles. Whitehaven Way I think it's about 40-43 miles long. It has is a route I have considered doing, so maybe one for next year after I've done the uh, seven way here on West Country Wanderings. Now, though this is generally a quiet area, it seems to be either helicopters or planes or gliders. I guess it's because it's a bank holiday. Today is Easter Monday, so you haven't seen my other couple of videos. Happy Easter! Of course, it'll be over by the time you see this video in a few days' time. Now, if you haven't seen my other Cotswold Way walks, or the Cotswold Way, I did 20 videos on the Cotswold Way, I have mentioned Breeden Hill two or three times. In fact, we have walked up it. Well, I visited Elmley Castle once. In fact, when I was doing part of the Cotswold Way, did that as a separate video en route on the way back. And uh, I did another video from Elmley Castle, just the other side of the hill, looking for the castle at Elmley Castle. Well, we kind of found it, but we couldn't get close to it, of course, because it's, um, it's a private deer park. But where we're walking today is definitely a public right of way. And as I said, the Breeden Hill, it is part of the Cotswolds AONB, but it's separate from the main escarpment. 
That's the ridge of course that we walked from Bath to Chipping Camden. It's known as an outlier and there are other outliers from the Codsworth Hills like Camlong Down near the town of Dursley. Now my decision to come here today because it's a bank holiday I thought about it. Well, first of all I didn't want to go on the trains because I'm wanting to go to Avoncliffe which is the other side of Bath. I want to do that on the train and I thought train over the Easter period that's a no-no because of uh, rail works and of course the trains being crowded. I didn't want to go too far from home but also I didn't want to go to anywhere near the uh, Cotswold honey pots likes of Broadway which is just a few miles over the other side of Breedon Hill on the main part of the escarpment it would be absolutely rammed today and Stowe, Castle Coombe, Lower Slaughter, all of those type of places which of course on a bank holiday get extremely busy. But here I've got the place to myself. <laughs> it's fabulous so uh, I think that was a wise decision. Word of warning about parking in Great Combaton. Great Combaton doesn't really get many visitors because it's not, though it's in the Cotswold AOMB it's not on the tourist trail, which is great, but it also means there's nothing in the way of facilities. It doesn't have a pub, it has a church as we've seen, but parking is limited. There are a couple of newer housing developments, well, sorry, housing developments, they're only like little cul de sacs, and uh, I've parked in one of those because the older buildings in the, uh, in the village don't have parking outside them they had like drives and that sort of thing so uh, make sure you don't block anybody's driveway just park with courtesy you will find somewhere but just take your time already the views so though we're nowhere near the top of the uh, hill as yet starting to stretch out just made out of the Mulvans of course that's the most obvious feature to the right of that would be the city of Worcester. We're not quite high enough to make out uh, Worcester yet or the cathedral. I'm sure we will when we get to the top. And I could make out some thick dense woodland to the right of that and I think that is part of Wire Forest. That's the Wire Forest area of Worcester, Worcestershire shall I say, around places like Kidderminster and Beaudley and of course the Severn Valley. Now the wood behind me, I'll just insert that. That is over the um, Avon Valley. It's not that far from where I was the other day at Fladbury, where the Ever River Avon, we had that weir there. Uh, interestingly, this, it's not far from Evesham, so that's kind of in the Evesham direction, from the other side of Pershaw, uh, if you're familiar with this part of uh, Worcestershire. And uh, there is an interesting place there, on the, in, inside that wood, it's called uh, Wood Norton, and uh, BBC have extensive facilities there. They use it for training, training their staff like camera operators, that side of things. They also have an underground bunker there. Um, I'm not sure if it's still in commission, but the plans were, of course, is uh, if we had to go, well, when we had the Cold War, of course, uh, well, the threat of war has still not gone away. There was a threat of bombing towards London. They could use the bunkers underneath the hill there to broadcast from. There's extensive transmitters on Norton Hill just to the north of the town of Hesham. It's a fascinating place. There's also a very posh hotel now there as well and uh, a retirement village. So it's all kind of been re-landscaped so that BBC don't use as much of it as what they did do. But uh, if you search it out on YouTube, you'll probably find people that have tried to get in there and film around it. I'm certainly not going to be doing that here on West Country Wanderings. But uh, if that's your kind of thing, I'm sure you'll find some more information out about Wood Norton near Hesham. So today is the first steepest walk that we've done on the Cotswold Walk series. So as I say, this is number five. All of the previous ones have followed a river, a prominent river in the Cotswolds. This one doesn't, this follows a hill. <laughs> and obviously the Cotswolds are known for the hills. And of course, they're not actually hills as such because they are one continuous escarpment. The hill's a bit of a misnomer and you just have these few outliers which run separately. But uh, yeah, they're not the hills in the, the normal sense of the word, because it is one 
sheet of limestone that's tilted on its axis and that's that edge forms the hill and of course we have limestone here as well and lots of lambs and sheep which of course is what the Cotswolds is most famous for and how it got its wealth. So we have the extensive range of the Mulverns now to the south, just to the southwest of us here. And uh, of course so that's somewhere we've visited on West Country Wanderings a couple of times. I did one walk around the autumn period doing uh, Worcestershire Beacon when I got the train to Great Malvern Station and then, was it about four weeks ago now, I did a walk up to Herefordshire Beacon. Of course that'll be an area I'll be revisiting because uh, out of all the areas that I cover on West Country Wanderings, I have a real soft spot. I love, I love the Cotswolds, I love Devon and Cornwall, and all the other bits in between. I have a real soft spot for the Mulvins. I, uh, I find that the view from the top of the Mulvins is uh, unparalleled in the region that I cover. And of course I do like beaches and seaside as well, but that there's something extraordinary about that and obviously it struck something with Sir Edgar Elgar as well and being very popular with walkers these days. I'm sure if I went over there today it would be very very busy being a bank holiday. So I'm glad I've come here today. So though Breeden isn't such a mighty hill as the Malvern Hills, um, it is on the Cotswolds. We have the lambs around us. We've got beautiful views down the hill there and uh, it's wonderfully quiet and since I've left uh, the village of Great Compton I haven't seen one solitary person. And for filming that is great, really good. Now as we're gaining height, the soil is becoming thinner as well. And you can make out the limestone now breaking through the uh, soil surface, particularly on this track. Actually we're running parallel to the contour at the moment, although we were gaining height for the first half hour of the walk coming up from Great Combaton. We're now running along the contour, so it's flat at this point, but of course we're then, I'm looking at <laughs> still what we've got to do. Yeah, it goes up like that. So shortly in a bit, I think uh, we'll be turning left and making our way towards the summit. Of course, because the soils are thin here, it only makes it suitable for, for thinnish grass. You're not going to get thick, lush grass that is suitable for sheep. It's not going to be suitable for cows. The grass wouldn't grow long enough because of the narrow depth of soil to bring a lushness to make it suitable for dairy farming but is perfectly fine for the sheep. Just had a look at that view, you can make out Pershaw Abbey of course. I'll try and get a shot of that using my telephoto lens on the route back and insert that. And also beyond that you can make out the uh, transmitters at a place called Weichbold which is near, uh, well between Bromsgrove and Droitwich Spa and uh, that is the main transmitter for long way for BBC Radio 4 198 kilohertz the, <laughs> try and remember that thing stuck in head used to be uh, the source of the, um, the clock for radio clocks and then I think it moved to rugby and now it comes from a place in Cumbria near the coast on the Solway Firth uh, but yeah, it used to be there. But uh, yeah, 198 uh, transmitter for Radio 4. Don't know how long that transmitter is going to survive. I mean, they are switching off the AM transmitters. And that uses a very old, huge valve there. Uh, I used to, I met somebody that worked on that many, many years ago. And uh, once, they, they only have like a, a few spares left, because obviously they don't make those valves anymore. They're massive, great big things. Um, I think they were made by Thorn EMI, if memory serves, 
and uh, once the supply of those is gone then the transmitter will have to be switched off because it cannot be replaced because of the technology used. So that's uh, Woolus Hall behind me. Good example of uh, Cotswold architecture and building style. You can see the familiar Cotswold stone brickwork as well as you'd expect in this area. We're now going to start our climbs. We may not do so much piece to camera because I'm likely to be out of breath. This is the steepest bit of walking I've done for well, probably just since I was doing the Cotswold Way last year, in fact. Uh, so you can sort of see all the other ones have been flat along the, uh, the river valleys. But uh, here we go. Now the hills, you can just make out behind Pershaw. There are actually some 15, 20 miles to the north of Pershaw. They are the Clent Hills. And uh, one of those hills that make up the Clent Hill is called Licky Hill. Now if you follow railways or anything at all, Licky Hill of course is famously the steepest incline on a main line in Great Britain. I can't remember, one in 37, one in 33, I can't remember. I'll put it in below. <laughs> And also we come across a little bit of the, or certainly the edge of the Clent Hills when I did tie the big locks, goes into a tunnel to make its climb and it of course skirts around. That's the Worcester and Birmingham Canal of course. There is a large country park there. Just to mention a fellow YouTuber, I don't know the gentleman's name but the channel's called, it's a cracking channel, if you like my sort of things you'll probably like his sort of things too. It's called the Midlands Outdoors. He focuses on that area, up the black country, so there's a little bit more to the north of the area that I cover on West Country Wanderings. But it's really interesting stuff. He looks at railways, canals, <laughs> countryside, stately homes, you know, the sort of thing I do, castles and churches. Uh, he, he does all that sort of stuff in that area. So I'll drop a link. It's a really interesting uh, YouTube. I think he had a previous channel, it was into Urbex urban exploration. He's kind of went from that now and he set up this new channel called Midlands Outdoors about four or five months ago. I'll say I'll drop a link into that below. Yeah, we're climbing up very steeply now, <laughs> gaining the last 100 metres before we reach the summit to get to Banbury Tower and that fort. Really enjoying this walk. Been a little bit challenging in terms of the steepness because that's the steepest one I've been from 30 to best part of 300 in a short section. So excuse me being slightly out of breath, but it's been good. Of course, it's also downhill all the way back to Great Competent.
So most of there's some people behind me now they, they were trekking up towards the summit proper which is obviously Bamboo Tower and the fort which we're going to have a look at shortly because that forms our route back towards Great Competent. I won't do pieces to camera on the way back but I will do a final piece to camera of course to close the video off today when we reach the village and do that uh, spin around the village there. I hope you enjoy the walk here. I'm going to make a stop here for a bit. Beautiful bit of woodland here. It's quiet on the section. There's another footpath that continues down south. That will be heading down towards Breeden in that direction, down towards Tewkesbury. And uh, I'm just going to have something to eat and something to drink. And I'll see you in a bit. So we've now made it to the summit. Just getting views on the other side. Now looking down towards Church Downhill outside Gloucester. You can see the other outliers there. It's also Robinswood Hill, and that is the escarpment of the Cotswold Hills proper. And immediately opposite me here is Cleve Hill, which you'll be familiar with when the Cotswold Walk starts over towards Winchcombe. And those, you can even see those uh, pylons overhead, National Grid pylons that we were buzzing on the microphone when I was doing that walk there, around Downswell. And Cleve Hill, of course, is the highest point amongst the Cotswold Hills. And of course the range continues around and then I'll be heading around towards Broadway and Chipping Camden. Behind me lies the remains of Kemerton Camp. It's believed to date from 1st century AD. In fact, it was abandoned 1st century AD. We're not sure how much before it was actually first used as a settlement. There was a battle here, so it's an Iron Age fort. And uh, there was a battle. Don't even know what the battle was called. This site lies in the parish of Kemerton. Kemerton is the nearest village, just the other side of the hill here. And uh, yeah, it, it was also used during Romans times as well, there's evidence of Roman settlements and there's Roman stones that have been found in the area. So yeah, this is Kemerton Camp on the top here of Breeden Hill in the Cotswolds. That behind me is the summit and that behind me is also known as Parsons Folly, but on the map, the OS map, it's marked as Banbury Stone Tower. But also, by local people, it's known as the Folly Up the Hill. So take your pick, you have three names to choose from. The reasons it's known as Parsons Folly, it was built for a local MP, John Parsons, from nearby Kemerton Fort, he wanted it. And they also reckoned that this was the embryonic design of what Broadway Tower later built of, um, over yonder, about six miles over that way, what it was based on. And of course, you can also see that from the RAF Defford site down there, um, where we went to the National Trust place at Croom. And that, of course, is from the Earl of Coventry and his good lady wife, and she wanted something built on the hill to commemorate a naval battle, which name completely escapes me at this moment because I've been climbing up the hill for the past couple of hours. But uh, yeah, so if you have a look at that, I will put some more links in before if you want to know some more information. But uh, yeah, Kemerton's Folly, Parsons' Folly, uh, Banbury Stone Tower, the Folly up the hill, take your pick. <laughs> but anyway, what I'm going to do now, you won't see me now until I'm down the bottom of the hill. Well, what I'm going to do is going to put the telephoto lens on. I'll do some voiceover and point out some of the views you can see from the top of this magnificent hill here in the Cotswolds. So if I start off looking in a north, north easterly direction, that is Birmingham. You can make out there some of the uh, tower blocks in Birmingham there. And I'm just going to move it round to the left. So that was the uh, Clent Hills that I was speaking about earlier, which of course uh, Licky Hill makes up. And uh, places like Hells Owen and Dudley lie in that direction. And that there, of course, is the town of Pershaw, where we started our walk today by the banks of the River Avon. And just focusing in there near the centre of the screen, that is Pershaw Abbey.
Now some more tower blocks this time. Those are in the city of Worcester. They're actually quite close to Worcester Cathedral. I believe they're on the other side of the Seven, if memory serves. Perhaps somebody lives in uh, Worcester. Might be able to help out the name of those tower blocks. But they lie in uh, Worcester. And I'll just see if I can see Worcester Cathedral itself. Yeah, it is around there somewhere, but it's just a little bit too hazy today to make that out. And that, of course, is Worcestershire Beacon the highest point on the range of the Malvern Hills. And moving to the other side of the hill, some more transmitters there. That is at the top of Cleve Hill, the highest point in the Cotswolds. the walk today in the Cotswolds on Breeden Hill here on West Country Wanderings. Just to let you know it's quite a challenge doing the walk coming back. I feel a bit whoa. <laughs> Very enjoyable walk. Weather's held so it's been good in that respect and I managed to get some clearer views which I'll insert towards the end. Some now some towards the end as well. Just to let you know a word of warning is that the footpath on my descent from the top of Breeden Hill back here to the village of Great Combaton was extremely, extremely steep. Now, you, I will insert some photographs now just to give you an indication. I had to put my camera away on that descent. I, I wasn't able to do any video there at all because it was just very, very tricky. I was just hanging on to dear life to that footpath. In fact, what I did as I crawled around the side of the footpath and, and literally crawled along the ground because the footpath itself was like scree. It's like, I don't know if you've ever been to uh, the Lake District Wasswater, you've got those scree slopes above the lake there. It felt like I was uh, trying to climb down the side of that. It really was very, very steep. So if you do this walk and you don't fancy doing that, um, walk, steep walk back down there. And I don't blame you if you don't. And certainly I wouldn't attempt it if the weather is wet. Just carry on a bit further rather than turning left in making way in towards the Elmley Castle direction. And then there's another footpath, which I believe is more gentle and then turn left and then head back towards Great Combaton. Or alternatively, you could just retrace your steps and follow the footpath that's way on the way you came up the hill. Of course, you'll have a whole different series of views 
coming back down. There's still one you went up on the ascent towards the top of Breton Hill. But either way, it's a very enjoyable walk, lovely part of the Cotswolds, and this part of the Cotswolds isn't so well known as the other part, so it is tends to be quieter. There were a few families walking around the hill today, but of course that's to be expected on a dry, don't often get dry uh, Easter weekends, and of course this is the first Easter weekend that families have been able to get together after having all those uh, lockdowns. Anyway, what I'm going to do is close the video today with some shots of this lovely village here at Great Combaton. Hope you enjoy that. Until next time on West Country Wanderings, I hope to see you again very soon. If you're out walking, enjoy it. Take care. Look after yourselves. All the best and see you again. Bye-bye now. <music>